Hi everyone, hope everyone is okay. Okay, now we're gonna be doing questions on the topic assets and bases. And so I'll do a question. And this is very exciting because now we're using what we have been learning in the past couple of videos to be able to understand um, what we're gonna do right now. So I'm just gonna share the screen right now and then you can be able to see what we're going to do, right? So I just took an example question. Um, this is a 2015 Gauteng preliminary paper. Paper two and it's question seven. I'll use that as my example for today. So let's work together and see how far we go. Obviously the, the first questions, couple of questions um, are usually easy. Maybe not all the time, but they're usually pretty much straightforward. They're about recall. They're just about uh, the definitions. And here we have 7,1, two marks. Define a Bronsted lorry base. Define a Bronsted lorry base. Right, from what we learned, and this is what we're doing in assets and bases, and I want to be able to show it to you right now. A, a, ba a base, Bronsted lorry base, is known as a proton acceptor. So it's a substance which accepts protons. So I can say it's a base, a substance which accepts, and therefore it accepts protons right there, all right, it accepts protons, or you can say it's a proton acceptor, that's still pretty much okay. Let's go quickly to 7.21, calculate the pH of 0.12 moles uh, per decimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid solution. We're looking for pH and the three marks. Now, I want us to remember something. When it came to hydrochloric acid, as we talked about it, when it is in solution means that it is in water. Notice that it will give you the hydronium ions, which is H3, all right, excuse that H there, H3, K, uh, H3O plus, as well as the chloride ion here. What is important in such questions is for us to be able to know that the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, HCl, and the concentration of the hydronium ions, H3O plus, they are just the same, which is equal to 0 0.12 moles per decimeter cubed. And from the pH formula, pH is given by equal to negative logarithm concentration of hydronium ions, that's what you have there. And therefore I just put my values, negative log concentration, 0 comma one, two, guess what my answer is? It's gonna be calculator version 0 comma nine, two. Remember that pH does not have units. And it makes sense. Hydrochloric acid is pretty much a strong acid. And because it's a strong acid, the pH value would be definitely less than six, close to zero, uh, maybe between zero and one, as is given by this particular answer there. So it's important again to remember that the concentration of the acid, that's HCl in this case, will be equal to the concentration of the hydronium ions, 0, 0,12, and that gives you your pH there. So let's try and move on to the next question. You guys have the video here. So you can always pause, rewind, uh, do what you need to do so that you can be able to understand. I'm going straight to 7.22 and then mix it up 7.3 as well, 7.32 very quickly so that you can all understand what I'm going to do right now. Here's 7.22. Um, Write down the formula of the conjugate base of HCl. Obviously, HCl, when it donates a proton, it becomes a conjugate base. What is the difference between an acid, HCl, and its conjugate base is just one proton. So the difference one proton gives me the formula of the conjugate base of HCl is Cl minus, the chloride ion right here. Pretty much straightforward. We did an example like that on our previous videos. 7.31, why is HSO4 minus regarded as an ampholite? Okay, so here's the key word, ampholite. Did we learn about this? Yes, we did. So what is an ampholite? It is a substance which can act both as a base and as an acid. So why is it regarded as an ampholite? Because it can act as a base, all right, or an acid, depending on what reaction it is in. That's why it's called an ampholite, 7.32. Okay, let's go. 
write down an equation for the reaction of HSO4 minus, all right, with water, with water to form the hydronium ion. So I'm already given what's going to be formed with water and it's a reversible reaction, just like almost all reactions are in terms of this topic. So it's going to form a hydronium ion. So I'm going to write my hydronium ion. Let me see what else happened here. All right. Now, if I look at this clearly, I will notice because I'm told that I'm going to form a hydronium ion, I will notice that the HSO4 minus must have donated a proton to water, making sure that this becomes my acid because it donates and the water becomes my base because it accepts. And then that's why you've got the hydronium ions. Because I've donated a proton here, then I'm going to have the sulfate ion remaining as SO4. There was a minus here, but because I lost, and this topic was electrochemistry when you talk about it, because I lost a proton, then I'm going to now be two minus right there. That one becomes your answer and equation or HSO4 minus with water to form a hydronium ion. That's your acid and base reacting together. There was a donation, there was acceptance, acid donated, the base definitely accepted. Hydronium ions and SO4 two minus ions was produced. Remember again, guys, don't forget, you lose an H, you become more negative, you were negative one here, become more negative, you're now on negative two. But we don't say, negative two, say two negative, the way you write it right there. Okay, let's go further. I like what we're doing. Let's see if we can get more interesting questions and align this to what we're learning. Remember, it's all about applying what we know, applying what we've been taught. And the more we do these things, the more we understand. The less we do, the less we understand. Here we go, 7.4 is the story. Bongiwe and Sam plan to do a titration. Prior to the titration, each of them um, prepares a purette using the given method in the table below. Bongiwe, what does she do? She raises the purette with the acid before filling it to the mark with the acid. Sam raises the purette with water before filling it to the mark with the acid. So question is explain why Sam used an incorrect method. Right. We talked about one of the precautions when it comes to the titration. So in this case, why Sam's method is wrong? Because he used water to rinse the purette, then filled the purette with the acid, which will be the standard solution in this case. Sam's method is wrong because when you have cleaned the purette with water first, there'll be droplets of water on the purette. And so when you add the acid, they will dilute the acid, they will compromise your concentration of the standard solution, and eventually your results become unreliable because you've already diluted the acid, which we are not supposed to do. So Bonu's uh, method is very correct. Once you rinse the puree with the acid before filling it to the mark with the acid, you avoid these concentration changes or the compromise in the concentration. So if you were to write this, I would say to myself, it's because Sam's method is wrong because it dilutes the acid. The drops of water on the puree will dilute the acid. All right, that's good. Let's go to 7.5. Don't forget that you rinse the puree with the acid or the base if it's going to be the standard solution. Anyway, let's go to calculations. 7.5. A solution of potassium hydroxide is made by dissolving um, 8.0 grams of potassium hydroxide in 250 cubic centimeters of distilled water. And then the question says to us here, calculate the concentration of the potassium hydroxide solution. I always say this, your choice of the equation will always depend on the information given. Get your information, pick your equation. So what's my information? I am told that a solution of potassium hydroxide is made by dissolving mass so I've got the mass of potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide, by the way, is KOH. I have its mass, which is equal to 8.0 grams. And then I'm told that the volume of distilled water, so the volume in which this thinner solution was going to be made, is going to be equal to 250 cubic centimeters. I must say this now before we go further. Always change the volume to cubic decimeters. So it's going to be 250. And how do I do it? 
I multiply by 10 to the power negative three, or somebody can say you can divide by a thousand, which is pretty much one in the same thing. My information, what am I looking for? I'm looking for concentration. Okay, choice of the equation depends on the information given. C is equal to M, there's an equation like this, mass, then molar mass multiplied by the volume. I need to remind myself. So the molar mass of potassium hydroxide, how do I get it? The molar mass of potassium hydroxide periodic table. All right, so potassium, I'll write this here so that everyone can see. We use a different color pen. Potassium is 39 plus oxygen, which is 16 periodic table, plus hydrogen, which is one. Guess what I get? I get the number 56. All right, then I do the math. Mass, 8.0. Molar mass is going to be equal to 56, and then 250 by 10 to the power negative three. I gotta get my answer. It's in moles per decimeter cubed. So my answer becomes equal to 0, 0.57 moles per decimeter cubed. That's the concentration of your potassium hydroxide. Now this question 7.51, or rather 7.5, is definitely an indication of what I talked about earlier on when I talked about the fact that when you're doing these questions, please remember that you must understand that um, you can prepare standard solution by dissolving a solid in distilled water. Clearly, that's fine. Let's go to our next question. I'm hoping that you guys are ready for my next question. Let's go quickly. Let's move on to 7.52. We'll read our story. We get it right. Okay, 7.52, um, a 25 cubic centimeter of the solution prepared as above, the one that we prepared above, and neutralized against, um, and neutralized against 40 cubic centimeters of a dilute sulfuric acid solution. The reaction that you have is as follows, two moles of potassium hydroxide, one mole of sulfuric acid to give you one mole of potassium sulfate, and two moles of water. Calculate the concentration of the dilute acid. Calculate the concentration of the dilute acid. Very important that we get that clear. All right, I'm ready. The choice of the equation again depends on the information given. What information are we given? Let's see. So this is because this is a titration, it's pretty much straightforward. We can see what we can do with it. 25 cubic centimeters of the solution prepared as above. That's the volume of that substance that we prepared above, which is the base. So that's VB. 25 and then it is neutralized against a solution and what solution is that is the solution 40 cubic centimeters of dilute acid that becomes my va the acid is dilute but do i know my ca no concentration of acid i don't know ca but i know cb from the previous question i was able to get this right so then i can say ca then i'm going to have va over CB, VB is equal to NA over NB. Let's put numbers together. All right, so CA, concentration of acid, I don't know you. VA, your volume of the acid, which is 40 by 10 to the power, negative three, over CB, which is concentration of base, I know it from the previous question, zero comma five seven, multiplied by the volume of the base, 25, by 10 to the power negative three. All this is equal to number of moles of acid. What am I talking about by number of moles of acid? From the balanced equation, let me see. Number of moles of acid, there's my acid, it's one mole right here. The coefficient is one, so I'm gonna put one over, and then this one is the base, which is gonna be two, and then the rest is maths. So CA at the end of the day after cross multiplying becomes equal to 0, 0,178, that's moles per decimeter cubed, concentration of the acid. Clearly, that's fine. Let's try and do the next one, so that at least we can see that we understand. So obviously, when you were getting this right, you needed to cross multiply this one here. So half multiply this whole thing, and after that you divide everything by this number, that's how you're gonna get your CA. Don't forget that, um, you must know the maths of it. Okay. Let's try and see if we can do something else. Remember, nothing is difficult. We only need to get to understand what we're doing. Go back to the theory, take things step by step. Then you should be able to get things done nicely as can be seen. Okay, just skip that question. Let's go. The dilute solution 
uh, in question 7.52, that one whose concentration we know was prepared by adding 10 cubic centimeters of concentrated sulfuric acid to 490 cubic centimeters of distilled water. Question is calculate the concentration of the concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, please remember that this is um, another method of making a thinner solution by diluting um, a concentrated solution. In the first part, it was by dissolving the particular substance in water, and that's clearly right there. Okay, let's just finish up nicely on this one. So I'm looking for the concentration of the concentrated. Guess what I know? C1V1 is equal to C2V2Y because the concentration uh, C1 is the concentration initially, which is the concentration of the concentrated C1, right? And then I need to find, that's the one, C1, I don't know, then V1 is the volume of that particular concentrated uh, solution. So that volume is 10 by 10 to the power negative three. C2 is the concentration of the dilute, which in that case, which we found from the previous question was equal to 0 0.178 moles per decimeter cubed. And then V2, becomes the volume of the dilute. Now notice V2, the volume of the dilute, go back to our previous um, uh, um, videos. Uh, V1, because it's dilute, so it's gonna be the volume of the concentrated plus the 490 um, cubic centimeters. So it's volume of concentrated, which is 10, plus 490, which gives you 500. 500 divided by 1,000, that becomes 0 0.5, or you can say 500 multiplied by 10 to the power um, uh, negative three. This is decimeter cubed, and that one is decimeter cubed. Guess what? C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. And I am looking for C1. C1 becomes equal to C2, V2 over V1. Right, so the concentration of concentrated C2, 0 0.178. V2, 0 0.5, which is 500 cubic centimeters over V1, 10 by 10 to the power negative three. Guess what I get? 8,9 moles per decimeter cubed. This becomes the concentration of the concentrated. And so again, as a tenant to take home, don't forget that, how did I get my V2? I said 10, which was the volume of the concentrated plus 490, that was for the distilled water, that gave me 500 cubic centimeters, which is now culminating to 0 0.5 uh, decimeter cubed. So C1, V1, C2, V2 will give you an answer. That's basically what you needed to know. And I'm glad that we did this question. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And then from there on, we'll be taking other questions. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.